What is going on guys and welcome to the third installment of the deadlift series. Now my name is Brian Alzru with NeverState.com. That's Alzru as in balls without the B and kangaroo without the kanga. Hope I'm saying that right. If you haven't seen parts one and two, I would definitely recommend going back and watching them because I could use the views. Part one deals with your form and your setup and how to fix it and then part two is dealing with tips and cues that help me. They should help you. They will help you. In this third exciting installment, we're gonna talk about reverse engineering the deadlift and how to identify your weak points. So let's get after it, let's get started, let's hit some PRs, let's go. All right, so if you are brand new to deadlifting or you've been doing it for 50 years, everyone will agree that if you're doing touch and go reps, the second, third, fourth rep is always easier than the first. I'm a genius. And the reason why is because if you're lowering the bar under control, and by under control, I mean that you're not dropping it or you're not just essentially releasing and riding the bar down. If you are lowering it under your own control, you have to do that efficiently. It's virtually impossible for you to get into a bad position when you're lowering the bar and you're just barely trying to touch the ground and then reversing the motion. Now I'm talking about moderate weight. You can do a lot of things with 100 or 135 pounds that you can't do with 500 pounds. And there's a lot of things you can do with 500 pounds that you'll never ever do with 800 pounds. If you have a decent amount of weight on the bar, your body will force you to lower it as efficiently and as safely as possible. So what I would encourage you to do is record yourself from a couple different angles on your deadlift hitting reps two and three and four. After you lift that terribly ugly first rep, lower the bar under control and barely tap the floor, then reverse the motion. Now you're gonna take that video and you're gonna pause it at the very lowest point of your rep, right when those plates barely touch the floor. Now if you actually did take the time to do this, I want you to make special note of where your hips are, where your shoulders are, where the bar is in relation to your body, how well your lats are set, how close the bar is to your shins. All these things are gonna become super, super important, and this is going to be your most strong pulling position. This is exactly how you want to be set up for your first rep. Now take that freeze frame picture and start recording yourself performing a bunch of singles. You wanna take the two images and see how closely they resemble each other. Remember, when you lowered that heavy bar under control, you were in your most powerful position possible. That's a lot of peace. If when you were recording your singles looks different than that very first freeze frame photo where you were lowering the heavy bar under control, then you need to fix that. Are your hips lowering your setup when you're performing the singles? Is the bar further away from you? Are your lats not as tight? What is different about the two? Really take some time and work on your setup so that you're closely mimicking that first freeze frame photo as you possibly can. And then do it and do it and do it. You don't even need to lift the bar. Just get yourself down into the perfect setup position because you're programming new movement patterns into your brain. Once you've done this 10,000 times and your new setup closely resembles that freeze frame photo, it's time to start lifting the bar and move on to part two. All right, so now that you've cemented your new deadlift form, I want you to try something that works amazing for me. Just give it a try. If it works for you, use it. If it doesn't, throw it out, but this helped my deadlift a ton. So you guys have heard me say on a ton of videos that you can never get as much air into your belly when you're under load as you can without. And I think it is the exact same thing for a deadlift. So a lot of people like to get in the bottom of their setup, then set their grip, get everything the way that they want it. Then they will raise their hips up, try to get air into their belly, drop their hips back down and then pull on the bar. That doesn't work for me. Because my diaphragm is compressed in that bottom position, I don't feel like I can get nearly as much air into my belly as I need to lift heavy weights. So what I think works best is standing over the bar in the exact same position that you would at lockout of a deadlift. I have my butt flex, I have my shoulders back, I have my chin in neutral position. I visualize the weight in my hands and I make this as real as possible, even to the point where one of my hands is supinated. Then at this point, I get a huge belly breath, as much air as I can possibly fit in there. Then I pantomime lowering the bar for my second or third rep. I feel the weight, I make it as real as possible, I punch my butt back, I slide the bar down my legs, I mimic the exact speed that I would if it was 600 pounds. Once I get down the bar, I grip it, squeeze as hard as I can, bend it across my shins, I pull the slack out, then I explode. All of that extra air in my belly is like compressing a spring. It literally is just crunching it down into a tiny little space, and then once I'm ready to go, I shoot out of there. I'm holding my breath from the moment that I start lowering that imaginary bar all the way until I'm standing up at lockout, with the real thing. This one simple trick has done a ton to help my deadlift weights. It's very similar to getting the breath up on top of a overhead press when you're going for reps. It is virtually the same exact thing. 
it makes a world of difference if you do it right. But again, if this doesn't work for you, like I said, just throw it out. But right now we're gonna move on to part three where we talk about identifying the weak points of your deadlift. All right, so there's three basic places where people get stuck on their deadlift. They either can't break the bar off the floor, they get stuck at mid shin to low knee kind of level, or they can't lock it out. We're gonna quickly discuss why these areas could be a problem for you and what you can do to fix them. So the first one, you can't break the bar off the floor. There's a couple reasons why this is probably happening. Number one could be that you're just not strong enough. Sorry, man, I know that seems basic, but a lot of people will load up 400 or 500 pounds when really their max is about 20 pounds under that. If that's the case, you're probably not even breaking off the floor. So the first thing you need to troubleshoot is the lack of strength, and you need to make sure that you're making appropriate weight choices. The second most likely thing is that your setup is weak at some point. Go back and watch part one, man. I told you I need the views. If something is wrong with your setup or you're not getting enough air in your belly, that bar is not gonna leave the ground, at least not well. It could also be CNS fatigue. If you are constantly trying to crush heavy weights for high reps, things aren't gonna go well when you go for a one rep max. Think of your deadlift like a life meter on a video game. Every single time that you perform a heavy rep, it ticks down a little bit. So if you tick down five points, and then you recover for three, and then you tick down another five, and then you recover for three, you're working your way backwards. That's not gonna end well. Another thing that could possibly be happening is that you're not getting good leg drive. So a lot of people will recommend doing deficit deadlifts. I personally have never gotten any good results from deficit deadlifts, and I really don't know too many people who have. That said, everyone else recommends them. I'm gonna throw it out there. Come on. But I think some better options would be heavy, deep front squats and SSB squats. Both of those two options are going to put more stress on your core, trying to stay upright. It's gonna build your upper and your middle back, as well as your legs, as well as your leg drive. You can't go wrong with either one. I also like the deadlift stance SSB box squat. It should be self-explanatory, but all that is is a box squat from the deadlift stance, and you're using the SSB bar, again, to put more pressure on your upper to middle back. Now, other people can break the bar off the ground, but then it just kind of hovers at that mid shin to lower knee level. It's literally like the finger of God just presses down and says, no. If this describes you, I would recommend going back to part two of this deadlift series where I talk about explosive warmups, accelerating the bar, and performing your workup sets quickly. If you're building enough speed off the ground, hopefully that momentum will carry through that sticking point and this won't be an issue anymore. Also, another huge issue could be your setup or it's possible that you're trying to jerk the bar off the floor. When you jerk the bar like that, you pull your body out of position, your hips shoot up, your back gets rounded, you lose your brace. If that's your case, the bar is gonna get out in front of you and you're not gonna be able to get through that middle point because it's further out in front of the middle of your foot. This is no good. If this is your sticking point, most likely you have some technique issues that need to be worked out, but if you're looking for some assistance exercises to help build your core and your lower back, I would recommend the reverse hyper as well as good mornings with the safety pin set to deadlift height. I personally like to use the SSB bar, but all that I'm saying is that you set the pins at the height where you start your deadlift from. So that is the bottom position of your good morning. They're absolutely brutal, but they will make you better. And better is better than worser. Write that down. Which finally brings us to your lockout. Most likely, if you rip the bar off the floor and you tore it through that middle section, and if you get to your lockout and it just stalls, you have upper back issues, man. Now, it could very well mean that you didn't set your lats in the setup or you jerked the bar off the ground so you lost that tightness. If your arms get out in front of you and you lose that real estate, you are probably not getting it back for the lockout. If you're good there, then you need a stronger upper back. I would recommend rows in all varieties. Barbell rows, dumbbell rows, single arm barbell rows. Perform them heavy and perform them a lot. Try different hand positions, try different arm positions. Do all varieties, just keep rowing. And of course, a rack deadlift or block pulls where you're just setting the bar to a higher height, so you're just working the top portion of the movement. All right, guys, there you go. There is part three of the deadlift series. Part one, we dealt with form and setup and how to fix that. So if that's your problem, go check that out. Part two, we talked about tips and cues and I almost killed myself trying to do deadlifts on bands. You should definitely check that out too. And then in part three of the series, we talked about reverse engineering your deadlift and how to identify some of your weak points. That should cover just about everything you need to know for the very, very, very basics of deadlift. I do really hope these tips helped you out. They have definitely helped me over my lifting career. Hopefully you do not make the same mistakes that I do and you can learn from all the things that I've done wrong. If you did find this series helpful, it would be great if you hit that thumbs up button and left me a comment down below just to let me know. Thanks.
So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and you walked away from this knowing something that you didn't know before. I thank you guys very, very much for watching. I will be back later in the week with a training log video. But until then, keep working hard. Do something amazing with your lives and I will catch up with you later in the week.